Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners. In this video, we'll look at how to create a sticky footer using CSS Flexbox. To set things up, let's create three sections within the body tags of our HTML document. The first section will be a header element, the second section will be a main element, and the third section will be a footer. We'll add some dummy content inside these elements just for the sake of this example. Inside the header, we'll add an h1. This is the header. In the main, we'll add a paragraph. This is the main content area. And inside the footer, we'll add another paragraph. This is the footer. With those three sections in place, we can now move on to the CSS. I've got some font rules set up here, uh, just for some basic styling. I'm using Open Sans from Google Fonts and I've text aligned to center. I've also got some basic styling applied already to the header, main and footer, uh, just to make things look a little more clear when we're previewing in the browser. The header um, and footer I've given a background color of light gray and I've just applied padding to each section. So if we look at our HTML, inside our body tags, we've got three elements. We want the header to be at the top of the page, the footer to be stuck at the bottom of the page, and the main content area to take up the rest of the available space. The header, main, and footer will be our three rows and the body element will be the parent flex container. So in our CSS, let's set the body element to display flex. This now becomes our parent flex container. By default, our three elements, the header, main and footer will be laid out side by side in the browser. This is because our parent flex container has the flex direction value set to the default of row. As we want the three elements to be stacked on top of each other as three rows, we'll need to set the flex direction in the body element, the parent container, to column. This creates a single column with three rows. At the moment, our footer is hanging in the middle of the page because our parent flex container, the body element, is only as tall as the content it contains. We only have a single line of text in our main content area section, so the page content is not tall enough to push the footer down to the bottom of the page. If we have a look at this using the Chrome developer tools, if you right click and inspect, we can see that the body element over here on the left, the body element has a height of only 183 pixels tall, which is the combined height of our three rows. To fix this, we need to add just two lines of code. The first is setting our body element, the parent container, to have a min height of 100 VH, or viewport height units. This instructs the body element, no matter how little content it contains, to always be at least the full height of the viewport or the browser window. If we look now using the Chrome developer tools, you can see that the body element has a height of 1007 pixels displayed at the bottom left of the screen and takes up the exact height of the viewport or browser window. If I remove this in the dev tools, by deselecting this min height value, the body element's height returns to 183 pixels, and if I add it back in again, the body is now the full height of the browser window. So having set the body height to always be at least the height of the viewport, we can now instruct our main content area to expand or grow to fill the remaining available space. By doing this, it will push the footer to the bottom of the page, even if there's only one line of content here. To do this, we need to go into our main element and give it a flex grow 
value of 1. By default, each child item in a flex container has a flex grow value of 0, which means it won't grow to fill any leftover space inside the parent. By setting this to 1, our main content area will now expand and fill the remaining space and our header and footer areas will remain at their original size because they are still set to the default flex grow value of 0 so they won't expand. And if we look in the browser now we can see that our basic layout is complete. Our header is the same height as it always was, as is our footer, but our main content area has now expanded because of the flex grow value being set to 1, which has pushed the footer to the bottom of the page. So to recap, our parent flex container, in this case our body, must be set to flex direction column so that our rows are stacked on top of one another. Our parent flex container must also have a min height of 100 VH. No matter how little content the page contains, the container will always be at least as tall as the viewport or browser window. Finally, our main content area must have a flex grow value of 1, so that it expands to fill the remaining space and pushes our footer to the bottom of the page. If we were to add more content to the page inside our main element, the footer would simply get pushed below the bottom edge of the viewport and would always remain underneath the content. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.